What's going on, friend? In this episode, we sound clean with Amplitude 5. I'm Jorge Lanza Singh now. We break it down, baby. All right, thank you so much for being here once again. And remember, as usual, like, subscribe, and do all those cool little things that we like to do on YouTube so that you and I can stay in touch with each other. Anyway, I know that I've done a few videos where I focused a little bit more on like high gain and sort of like metal tones. But today, we're going to try to sound a little bit more clean. And we're going to be using Amplitude 5 Max. And I could just like teach you how to do a patch. But I think like most importantly, I want to share with you a few of the concepts and like the ideas that flow through my head when I think about a clean sound and how to get to it, right? And I feel like when we're done with this video and I share all these things with you, you're going to be able to make the sound that you want. Not the one I want, but the one you want. All right, let's get a guitar and let's start talking about geekery. Zoop. <laughs> Today, we're going to be using my Fender American Professional 2 Stratocaster. And the main reason why we're going to be using this guitar today is because I have this idea that a clean sound, in my opinion, starts with low output pickups. And I do have a guitar that has a little bit more low output pickups than this, but I didn't want to go all the way down the spectrum, right? A little bit more like halfway there, kind of. So here we go. This guitar is going to be perfect for that. Plus, single coils and clean sounds just go hand to hand. All right, the first sort of like principle, if you want to call it that, that I want to share with you, it's gain structure. You've heard this term a lot. And in different contexts, I feel like it means different things. I feel like gain structure is like in every single step of the way of every kind of tone that we've ever heard so far. I don't know, maybe when we have like cochlear implants that start sounding in our heads, we're not going to have those confines of like headroom and stuff, but or maybe even then because it's in your head. So you still have headroom. Anyway, blah, 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 that got too silly. <laughs> but the, the whole idea is that in every in every step of the way, there's a sort of perception of headroom. Let's say in the ambient, if something is too loud, uh, that's the headroom that we have in our own hearing. That means that anything past that is either going to hurt us or you're just going to hear like distortion or whatever. That's basically our limit. And let's say, for example, in the environment of amplitude 5, the output, it's another one of those because once amplitude clips in here and you see the little red light flashing over here, you get a very, very, very unpleasant sound. That if you were trying to actually achieve something with the moves that you're doing in your amp, and all of a sudden you have to be taking account that that, that little clicky sound that happens with clipping is going to be just a reoccurring thing, I'm pretty sure you're not going to be happy with that. So that would be two versions, for example, of the same idea of gain structure. The same thing happens in pickups, and that's why you have a volume knob. A lot of people, you're going to see that they use their volume knob kind of like a, as a way to create distortion or not in their amps. And we're going to try to check that out when we're checking the sounds. But all, the, all, all I'm trying to say, it's important to learn gain structure because it's everywhere in every step of audio. So to begin with, now that I said that we have low output pickups in this guitar or moderately low output pickups, that means that there are guitars that have really high output pickups. Like, for example, this monster right here. This guitar has one of the hottest pickups I've ever heard in a guitar. And it really does push the amps a lot. Maybe not as much as the numbers would reflect, but it does. So let's say something that would sound clean in that guitar, maybe with this guitar would be very, very overdriven. Having said that, I want you to take into consideration that once you change guitar, let's say if you were already overloading your guitar interface and you get a higher output pickup, you're going to be overloading even more. And what's going to end up happening is that you're going to have distortion before you ever hit the amp. So the first thing that you will need to do is adjust that level accordingly. And I know it's sad to say, but I've heard of some of you friends that say, for example, when you have like a PRS guitar or like a Gibson guitar, and you say that your interface is like the, with the input all the way down and you're still hitting the red in your interface. I'm sorry, there's like really not much that you can do in that case. I feel like you really need a different interface. This is not the moment for me to recommend one, but what I'm using right now is the Axe.io by IK Multimedia. That maybe it's not the best thing, but in my case, the way I'm using it, I'm just using it as a preamp. I'm just going analog to analog in and out of the unit. I'm just using the impedance knob and the volume knob just to give me the signal that I need, but nothing else is happening there. And I try to always be very conservative and have enough space so that my different guitars can live in a nice way there and that that interface is never clipping or adding any unnecessary like artifacts or distortion that I don't want, especially right now that we're trying to do a clean sound, right? <laughs> All that to say is that when you're trying to make sound and when you work with audio, and the more you get into that rabbit hole, everything is built up by little tiny details. And all those little details start with the guitar choice. That's why I went Strat, 
to make a clean tone, right? Okay, that was a very long-winded explanation. <laughs> All that to say, adjust your interface accordingly. Don't go too hot so that you're not super destroying the amp. Let's say in this case, let me turn the amp off and let's just see how hard I'm hitting amplitude. So let's say even if I were to like hit it super hard, I mean, I will never play like that. <laughs> but even if I do that, I'm still not clipping my input, right? I still have an open signal going into amplitude. Now let's hear what happens in the amp. I think anybody could agree that that's a distorted sound. Unless you're Hendrix and that's actually a clean. <laughs> Which I love, I love that sound. I mean, super hairy cleans are my favorite cleans. So let's start by taking this output a little bit lower just so that we don't run into the problem of that thing clipping our signal. Especially in my context right now that I'm recording externally this sound for you to hear. Okay, so in this case of this amp, pretty high gain tone, but as you can tell, we have something here magical called a master volume switch. So let's say an amp, as a rule of thumb, would always be the cleanest when the master is at the max and the gain input is at the minimum. So let's see what happens right now. I'm still hitting amplitude right here, as you can see on the input. And I'm sure the amp is getting signal, but we're not driving it yet. So we have to do this. Okay. So there we have a pretty nice little Marshall clean sound with the same amp. Even though originally we thought we were in the presence of a very high gain amp. Because the way the distortion in an amp works, it's like if you were to imagine that your signal coming in, it's like this hand, right? And then in this line that I'm putting right here, it's where the distortion is going to start, right? So once you start hitting that or going past it is where the distortion starts. What the distortion is doing is clipping that signal with a very particular algorithm, with a very particular set of characteristics that make the distortion pleasing or the clipping pleasing. And depending on the amp that you're using, that clipping could be hard clipping or it could be soft clipping. So the signal that's going to go past that clipping line, it's going to be more or less depending on how hard or soft the clipping is, right? Most analog clipping is soft clipping. And that's what we hear as pleasing because it has more like harmonic content than just like, <coughs> which is what happens when you just distort in the digital realm, right? So with this gain, what we're doing is we're pushing that hand past that line. I want you to keep a close eye to the output as as I'm hitting this preamp. Be mindful of your headphones. Maybe this is going to get a little bit loud. <laughs> I'm going to try to save your ears though. You know I always got you to impose production. Right, Jorge? We got him. Yeah. Okay, let's go. So as you can see right there, the output stayed pretty much similar, even though we were hitting it and hitting it and hitting it harder and harder. The output wasn't moving too much because there was some clipping happening, right? The amp was not going to let things go through too much because that's the job of the amp, creating that distortion. Hardware-wise, there's another thing that matters, and that is the kind of cone that you have in your cabinet. 
a lot of times I'm sure you've heard like people using like vintage 30s or 40s or greenbacks or whatever. Those are for the most part low wattage cones. So that means that they will add their own distortion if you're pushing them with a like 100 watt amp. So most times, in my opinion, what I like to do is I go with like whatever 100 watt cone we have because that's going to give me the cleanest sound. And that is something just to keep in mind right now that we're going to go through amps and stuff like that. I think that would be like the end of the geeky part. And now let's go to the more fun part, the more subjective part, the part that we can actually just like talk about taste, which is what comes really in hand when we're doing this. Subjectively, as we're creating tones with our guitars, what we're going to try to be doing, it's basically create a balance of these four concepts. The first one is character. The second is warmth. The third is definition. And the fourth is space or the sense of space that we're trying to create. And what we do trying to create a nice tone that we like to hear in a song, for example, is basically balance all those four concepts. And that's just the way I see it, you know, because I think it's very simple. When I put it in those four categories and we go through this process together, I think it's going to make a lot of sense. And by the way, why don't you take a few seconds if you haven't subscribed already to go like the video, subscribe. Hope you're having a good day so far. We're about to dive in. All right, thank you so much. Let's get to it. Okay, so here we are. Let's get to the amps. And we're going to start in our clean section. Let's say, let's start with the classic, let's say, basement, Fender basement. And let's turn the reverb down for a minute. And let's, let's just hear with these settings that it has right here. has its own signature sound, right? And if we were to go to this other amp, let's turn the reverb down. Now let's hear it. Still a clean amp, but it sounds pretty different, right? Now let's hear another clean amp. Let's turn the volume down. Let's turn the reverb down. Very different tones. They all have their own vibe. They might not be the one that we want. And let's say if we were to use this other amp, turn the reverb down. They all have a very, very different character, right? They all have very different body and warmth. Their clarity and definition is different. And I think something very nice to think about when we're trying to select our amp that we want to use as our clean platform, if there's an input and output section, for example, or how much warmth is it giving me, let's say in this case, where all these amps that I showed you right now, where let's say close to like five, right? None of them had anything like super pushed. So that means that that's where they sit comfortably. Other than that, like you can still push it. And that's where they're going to start behaving a little bit different because the way they push the treble and the frequencies that they're adding, they're not the same on any amp. They all have a different character. They all do different things. And that's what's the beauty of different amps. And that's why I have a gripe with Tonex. And we might leave this for a different video, but I do have a gripe with Tonex. And I hope that's not going to cannibalize Amplitude because Amplitude, first of all, I feel like it's a total different animal <laughs> in a, on its own. But Tonex doesn't even get close to replace what you can do with Amplitude. This is where it's at. Every amp has a different reverb. Every amp has a different EQ. Every time you move a single knob in every amp is different. You are not getting the same generic Amplitude EQ on all the amps. I don't like that idea. Anyway, blah, 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 blah. I talk too much about Tonex. So in this case, for example, if you get here to the crunch section, let's say, for example, this California Tweed, let's try to put everything on let's say around five. I don't care to be super five, right? Let's see. Oh, reverb down. Presence here. Let's go. Let's turn our master up. Wow, this is the pokiest. 
Let's see, for example, in an amp like this, you can be mindful of how much gain you have. I mean, I don't know who would want an amp that clean, and let's say you were to push this up. Pay attention to what happens with the output, right? Since I have the gain so low and the master so high, we're so far away from that threshold line that I told you to think about that let's see what happens in the output. You start basically like on zero, zero. Like, there's not a moment that the amp actually gets in the way of the tone of the guitar. It's just literally, like, there to act as, like, a sort of, like, gain stage or whatever. But that's, like, that's, I think, like, a nice thing. If you're going to get super, super clean, and you want to get super, super spanky, I feel like that's, like, the inverse proportional line that you can imagine in your head. I don't know if that was correct. That Let's say it, one goes one way and the other one goes another way. The cleaner you want to get, the further your input has to be from your output, and the more distorted and compressed you want to get, the closer those two get. That's all you're doing. And that's why there's a perception that the more you distort an amp, the smaller the sound gets. I want to say that it's because that's kind of like what's happening. <laughs> and in the life that we can just like turn the output up, we're good, right? You can just do it. Back in the day, that would have been hard. How can you go from 130 decibels to 155 just to have more clean sound with your amp? You can't. <laughs> But also, you have this kind of amp, right? So, as you were seeing, like, amps are different. And like I said, everything changes. But the thing that changes the most is the character. So, let's say in this case, this Marshall. Sounds very round. Right? Like, there's no pokiness. I haven't changed my pickup. We're always in the same neck pickup. See how different the tone is? Like, this is like super pokey and aggressive and you can like almost feel the, the clankiness and the plickiness of the string just like coming at you like... <laughs> I mean, it's coming to get you like... Very pokey, but this one... It's like it's, it's combing that hair down. So instead of just like having all those little pieces come out at you, it softens them down a little bit. So let's say if you like that character. So now let's try to move on and let's say today we're going to make a tone with this guy, right? Let's make a clean tone with that, right? I think it's a great start because to begin with, I really like the character. If I was trying to do like more like a, let's say, uh, uh, let me go in position four and... Let's say if I'm going for something like that, maybe this is not the character that I'm looking for. Maybe I should be looking for this instead. You know what I mean? So, like Warren Heward from Produce Like a Pro says, horses for courses, right? <laughs> Whatever you want, you need a different amp. That's the beauty of having a bunch of amps. And I haven't said it on this episode, but right now, as in October 2023, right now it's the 21st of October, Amplitude 5 is only 100 bucks. The Amplitude 5 Max, so all these amps, basically. Because that's what I have. So you can get all these amps. You may think, oh, why would I need all these amps? Because you might need different tones. And I know that there's people that tell me like, oh, I get everything with one amp and one guitar, and that's all I need. And man, I'm so glad that that's all you need. 
Amazing. Good for you. But in my case, I need different sounds. <laughs> so let's just for the sake of it. Let's just do a tone with this. So I already like the character of it and the way the gain sounds. Let's say if I were looking to get it a little bit cleaner, I would do something like this. starting to get a lot better to me in my ears as a clean tone but then you have to decide now that you like this character how much of it you want and you say okay i want five of it You know, if you were like strumming like that, I think that's cool. Now, the next thing that we have to think about is how much body or warmth I want, right? Right now, let's say, right now on my neck pickup, if I want to do something like strummy on the first position. Maybe I need a little bit more warmth, and if I were to need more, there's more right here. Let's see what happens. I always like to try knobs by just pushing them all the way up and see what they do. More than anything, because of the human principle that it's easier for us to notice the difference when the difference is like in your face, right? So if I were to just do a little bit of a difference, I might not even hear it, <laughs> right? It's funny because in the high strings, it still has like that radio-y, like uh, uh, pokey mid-range sound. <laughs> kind of like, I don't know, like 3K, 4K. <laughs> and let's say if I were to need a little bit more of like that smiley face situation, I would give it more presence. Let's say right now my volume is on 10. But if I were to turn it down a bit, let's say to nine and a half. Or lower. I got rid of all that hair. I feel like it doesn't sound honky anymore. but it added the clarity and definition that I needed. So see how instinctively I just go for certain knobs to achieve something that I want. But basically, that's what I was doing there, just trying to get some clarity and definition when I push that presence all the way up. I wonder if it, if it funks a little bit better now. Now let's compare that to what this was doing. It kind of like does it, but in like a more glassy way. Let's see if we turn the bass and the presence all the way up, like in the other one. See how close they get. Wow, that is like super, super pokey. And then again, see, that's why I turned down the output before I started this whole experiment. Because if not, we would be clipping everywhere. <laughs> but this guy. I think it sounds incredibly fat. So maybe not the best for like that kind of funky. But very, very nice. I, I love the warmth of a Marshall. It still has that pokey mid range. But it just sounds so good. 
And I know like Amplitude is not saying it's a marshal, but just I it would fool me. <laughs> if you were to put the stamp marshal there, I would believe you that it's a marshal. I don't know. And every time I play this guitar too, I, I love a marshal with it. And this is just funny, huh? Okay, now the next step, a sense of space. And usually a marshal we have like a spring reverb here. And not just any spring reverb. I feel like the Marshall spring reverb is one of my favorites. Maybe because I have like a nostalgia. Probably the first spring reverb I've ever heard was a Marshall. I mean, who didn't hear one like in a gig or something or like carrying and then you you hear that thing. <laughs> Okay, so basically, let's say our main tone, it's right there. I feel like that's a nice clean tone if you're like playing by yourself. If I were to be playing in a song, in a mix, I would be looking for something more like this. Just because in a song, the 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 pokier the sounds and the less bass they have, the more they can be heard in the mix because usually you're going to be giving a lot of bass to the drums and the synths or like a bass, you know? It's like the king of twang, this amp. I love it. I feel like the presence is way too hot. I really like this amp. Especially because I, I do like to play stuff like... Or like... do a lot of that kind of stuff in pop music or like you know I do play like stuff like that or You know, you don't have like that need for like a super big guitar. This is not the 80s anymore. And usually I'm not like recording a guitarist. <laughs> but you know, I feel like that kind of sound fits in a song way easier. But if you're playing by yourself, this is what you want. But then again, what I wanted to say is like still in that sense of space, I feel like it's better in amplitude if you go right here and try to find one on, wait, 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 reverbs. There you go. Reverbs are here. And you see, there's like a little bit of a collection. This 63 reverb, I think it's like a spring maybe. And then there's all these other reverbs, right? Pick your poison, whatever you want is whatever. It's just whatever you like in the end. I feel like a lot of people tend to favor plate reverbs and guitars. And let's say if you were doing ambient, you would do a shimmer reverb. Let's hear the difference between those two. Let's put them up here. So let's start with the plate. And I know the mix right now is going to be too much. Let's turn it down. Oh, oh hi, Strat. I know that if you were watching so far and if you're still here, please let me know in the comments, say I'm still here. <laughs> so I know that you're still here in this lengthy video. But so if you notice right there, like before I put the plate or like any sense of reverb or anything like that, the sound is good. 
And we're still getting like the little sense of room that the actual room itself has. But as soon as you turn this plate on, it's just life, right? So I like to have a reverb at the very end of my chain that it's not going through the distortion of the amp or anything like that just because what I want is the sense of space. And if I was in the real life, it would be the reverb and the amp or I would try to go through the effects loop so that is after the fact. I feel like if you were to compare the two different approaches, let's say to put it before, let's say the cabinet here, or after, the sound that we like right now, let's say this sound. I feel like in this application, I like the amp the way it is right now. And if I were to put a reverb before the cab, I wouldn't be putting a reverb in the whole tone. I will be changing the whole tone before it comes to the cabinet. And maybe this would be like the more guitar player uh, version. But in my case, that's not what I like because I want to have the whole amp. go through my reverb and give me that sense of space. And then you can play with all these settings and try to get the tone that you want. Let's say if you were doing something more ambient -y, even though right now the decay is super long, we can make it longer, right? Nothing's stopping us. And that would be like super ambient -y, I feel, but like say if you put like something like a shimmer, then we're adding like a couple like more harmonic uh, tails to the sound. Let's see what happens. So in this case, I really like the amp because I, I hear the string. Listen to the string. But then... That tail is so long on the shimmer thing. Anyway, but you know what I mean? Like that, that is such a great tone. Like, and it's funny how it took us from one genre to the next. One reverb at a time. So then the sense of space is gonna sort of like determine kind of like a genre, I almost wanna say. Let's say if we were to put this reverb, which is a spring reverb, like. Now that feels a little bit more like, um, I don't know, like more indie. And 
anyway, you know what I mean? Like just by changing the sense of space, a lot changed in our guitar. And so after having all this long spiel, why don't we go have some conclusions? Let's go. Yeah. All right, if you're still here with me, I thank you so much for still being here because I know this was a long, long episode so far and I don't know how long it's going to be in the edit, but I've been rambling for a long time. But I feel like all of that is just to say that I will make another video just making a preset. <laughs> That's fun, but I wanted to take the time and go through the effort of sharing with you how I go about making a clean tone and the little principles that you have to be cognizant of when you're trying to approach making a sound and the context of that sound because like I was saying earlier if you're making a sound for you to play at home and just like feel great and like enjoy your time and have a nice afternoon that's one kind of sound but let's say if you're making a tone specific for a guitar part in a particular song you know the key that you're doing, you know the strings that you're playing with, you know how much low end you need, you know how much high end you need, you know how much distortion, how much character, you know what kind of reverb you need, if any, you know if you need a delay or not. So the whole decision making, it's going to be very different, but you're still going to be using those four things. Character, body and warmth, clarity or definition, and a sense of space when you're creating your sound. So if you will, this was basically the anatomy of a clean sound. And again, I want to thank every single one of you for being here, for liking, for subscribing, for all your super thanks and, and all your support. I really am grateful for it. And before I keep talking too much, remember, like if you like this video, definitely subscribe, stay warm, stay safe, go to the comment section down below and let me know what you think. Other than that, I'm out, my friend. Thank you so much for being here.